Good morning, everyone. So I imagine we have probably quite a few mothers and fathers and grandmothers and grandfathers, maybe a couple of great grandmothers and great grandfathers out here today. So this gospel, you know, there's an important task for you, for anyone who has any sort of progeny or even God, godparents too. Christ says, ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest. I don't know if you've noticed, maybe you have probably over the years, that the number of priests that we're ordaining has been shrinking. Kind of gradually at first, but it seems to be picking up pace. There's not nearly as many laborers in the harvest, for the harvest as we used to have, say, 50, 60, 100 years ago. That's not just priests, that's also brothers, monks, sisters, nuns, all of the, the vocations that exist in the church, even a marriage is shrinking and dwindling. And so back to the mothers, fathers, grandmothers, grandfathers. It's important that we take a look at how we talk about vocations in our families. I can't tell you how many times I've casually mentioned to parents or grandparents that, hey, I think, you know, your, your child might have a vocation to religious life as a sister or uh, as a priest. And they're like, oh, no, not mine. No, I can't let that happen. You know, I want grandkids. You know, like, I, I need to make sure that I have more, more generations after me. But then in the same breath, they say, oh, Father, but, you know, we need a lot more priests. We need more sisters and nuns. It's like, yes, you're right, but if not your grandkids, if not your kids, then who? The question we have to ask ourselves today is, are we open to vocations in our families? Are we promoting vocations amongst our kids and grandkids, great-grandkids? I know we often think, oh, you know, like the, at least the world thinks, that, you know, generations are important, like having kids, grandkids, great-grandkids, and all that, and everything else. And while obviously that's what marriage is for, it, it helps with that, when it comes to vocations, these, there's a much higher good in vocations, in, in, in having kids, having grandkids, having brothers or sisters um, that are in the religious life or a priest. There's a good there. I know we think we lose grandkids or lose a generation from them, but we gain so much more. I remember one of the things that I struggled with when I was entering discerning seminary and discerning priesthood was that I was never going to have a wife and kids. I was never going to have grandkids that would come and visit me. And so uh, on some level, I thought I was losing all of that. And it took me probably a couple of years to realize that Sure, I I lost that in some regard, but I gained 1.2 billion brothers and sisters, 1.2 billion children. Every Catholic in the world for a priest becomes their spiritual child. So in the family sense, for parents and godparents and grandparents, Sure, you might lose the one or two that you might have had, maybe, if God would have even granted that, but you gain 1.2 billion spiritual children that you have to pray for every single day of your life. So again, are we promoting vocations in our own families? Are we caring enough about what God is doing in the life of our children that we're able to set aside our own wants and desires in order to support them and what God wants them to do. It's a hard thing to do, but it's a good thing. My brothers and sisters, we all have a role to play in fostering vocations, and we are truly in desperate need of more. So ask the master of the harvest to send out laborers for his harvest.